Well, greetings again, everyone, and I thought I'd make another little short video to show some of the progress we've got done. I've got both the Z-axis and the X-axis ball screws hooked up. <clears throat> I've got the uh, speed slowed way down to about uh, 20 inches per minute because I don't have any of the limit switches wired up yet, so I don't want to accidentally hit the end of one of these ball screws. Z-axis, I've got plenty of travel, but the x-axis there's only seven and a half inches of travel there so it'll be pretty easy to hit one side or the other but I'll uh, run it a little bit and show you how it works very smooth and then x-axis Nice and smooth. I'm going to pause the film a little bit and put some of the covers on. Um, I've got some of them made. I don't have the ball screw covers made yet. And uh, I'll probably start working on those tomorrow. i got the material in for it today. Of course the backsplash is off. The cable carriers are not on. Uh, none of the panel is wired yet. I'm just running it uh, with no safeties, no anything. So hang on just a minute and I'll put some things on for you. Okay, I put the... Uh, left panel on there. You see that nice pretty grizzly emblem on there. That was actually tucked down underneath to where it really didn't show up and uh, grizzly does a really good job on that emblem so I wanted to put it up in that blank spot there. I didn't have anything to go there. One of the things I did when I made the motor mounts I kinda made sure I spaced them correctly and I pre-drilled the holes to mount these covers and also these covers serve as uh, some of the extra switches. The black switch there will be the uh, software limit override. The red switch on the bottom will be uh, feed hold, yellow will be resume, and the white will be go to home. In the top row of course you have uh, your reset or your e-stop and then where it says power start that will say uh, cycle start and then the inching or jogging same thing it always did and that green button will become a uh, flip switch just on off switch for the flood coolant so I can run it manually when I want to. So this is working out uh, real good. I want to pause it again. I want to show you behind that panel, show you how much space is back there and how that worked out. Uh, you can see a little bit behind there. It's not as light as I'd hoped it would be. But uh, the four switches on top, there's plenty of room to wire them and put the wiring harness up above. Of course, the stepper motor and all the wires will come out there together. So that made a uh, real nice, neat package in behind there. It's just a little thinking ahead. Obviously, I haven't bent this end panel around. That's real obvious. You can see the line there. But when it's bent, it'll come in and meet this other panel on the back. And then that'll make a complete enclosure. So the stepper motor and there's a safety switch there on the end. And I've got a little rod that hits that switch. And I can change the length of the rod if I want to. But that's just a mechanical limit to keep from hitting the end of the ball screws. One thing I did is I kept the... Uh, DROs that was on the machine and that turned out to be a real good thing because my glass scales have reference marks on them so I didn't go to any great expense on my limits they're just mechanical switches so when I hit the end of a switch I can enable the references then and I'll know right where I'm at right to a tenth and that's close enough this machine's not going to hold tenths anyway it's not that rigid so it's going to make a fun machine to play with I've still got to do the tool post I put the backsplash back on, of course finish all the wiring, uh, get the cable carriers on, but it's, it's looking pretty good. It's just about done. So I'll be back in touch.